Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this week for another installment of Ask Epic, where we are meeting every week to discuss all things Epic. We want to provide our new to Epic families and our returning families um, a place to learn all about the opportunities that we offer. I'm Sarah Nunley, and I am part of the Epic development team. Hi guys, I am also from the, the development team. My name is Shawnee Woodruff. Happy to see everyone here today. We do have some information we're going to share today about the college and career uh, readiness services and support they provide to our families. Um, there's always a lot of information when it has to do with that, lots of changing information um, throughout the year. So we want to always uh, update all of that information as we can. And then if you have any questions or comments, you can always put them in the um, chat box. I will um, try and address those as we go through the webinar. But keep in mind that during the webinar, we will answer a lot of questions. So you may want to wait until towards the end to ask some questions. And, and if we haven't addressed it, go ahead and ask that question. Um, if it's something that looks like it's going to be maybe a longer um, answer or you need more additional services, we will just go ahead and get that information from you and reach out to you separately. So that way we can address whatever those questions are that you have. And also um, we have a phone number with our department. And so if you would like to reach out to our department, which is the um, development team, not the, the college and career, but if you would like more information about um, Epic in general, or you need to enroll or any of those things that you can always reach out to us at 405-400-0651. Four you can also email us at edt at epiccharterschools.org. And I will put that all in the chat for you here in just a second. Um, so we just always, we recognize that at the end of the year, we have a lot of families that are thinking about summer vacation. They're thinking about relaxing, um, not really thinking about the next school year, but we do have a lot of time on our hands during the summer that we can really be thinking about what we're going to do for this next year for our freshmen, for our sophomores, for our, our, all of our grade levels that are high schoolers. So we just want to make sure that we're really being prepared um, ahead of time for those deadlines because they do happen. And then sometimes you can't get in to do the things that you want to do if the deadline is already passed. So we want to give that information to you ahead of time so that those things can be um, addressed quicker instead of later and be ready for this next school year. Absolutely. Um, this is so exciting. I love the college and career department. You guys are amazing. And I know we always have parents that, especially if you're a, a parent of a new high schooler, you're going into uncharted territory. And so I have no doubt whatsoever that this is going to hit a lot of parents and answer a lot of questions. So today we are joined by Jay Strickland, Shannon Starr, and Brandy Corcoran. Would you mind introducing yourselves and telling us a little bit about your roles at EPIC? Thank you so much for having us. Um, I think this is my second time back this year, and um, we wish we could do it every webinar because um, we feel like we have so um, many important things to share um, here in the college and career readiness department. And um, we are very expansive and we offer so many services to our students and our families and caregivers and um, it can be overwhelming. And so we are just so thankful and grateful for the opportunity to reconnect with you and get some word out about what we've got going on now and what's um, upcoming next year. And um, you guys are right, it's never too early to start planning. And so thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I'm Jay Strickland. I'm the Managing Director of the College and Career Readiness Department here at EPIC. Um, really, our goal is to work with students in eighth through 12th grade to ensure that they know um, who they perceive themselves to be as young people, what their interests are. We guide them through that process and Brandy will talk a lot about that. And then we wanna connect them with post-secondary opportunities aligned with their interests and their short and long-term goals. That way they can have the most most purposeful high school experience that is going to prepare them to be future ready and in demand once they graduate from EPIC. Um, and we do that in a lot of different ways. And I know we've got a couple really um, talented team members here, but we're missing a whole lot of other talented team members. Um, we wish that we could cover every area, but I know we're going to focus specifically um, on just a few. Um, but I just want to say before I turn it over to Shannon and Brandy for intros that um, we just welcome the opportunity opportunity to partner with you. We know that it can be scary and intimidating and there's so many things out there, many more opportunities than were out there when we were all in school. 
people. And it's like, where can I start? What do I do? You hear bits and pieces of things and it can just really be overwhelming. And sometimes when you feel so overwhelmed, it kind of funny enough makes you do less than more because you're just like, ah. And so um, we just welcome the opportunity to partner with you. So at the conclusion of today's webinar, if you want to connect with myself, um, Shannon, Brandy, any of our team members, hop on the website. Um, we will get your questions answered. We will guide you. There is no silly question. Um, and if we don't know the answer, we will find it and we will make sure that you feel well equipped to be able to service your um, EPIC students. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Shannon for an intro. Hi, yeah, I'm Shannon Starr. I am the College Pathway Director here at EPIC. I also facilitate support for area college concurrent enrollment with all our partners across the state of Oklahoma. Um, so to Jay's point, if you have anything, any questions uh, around college planning, feel free to reach me at, reach out to me and I will connect you with the right specialist on our side of, of the house and um, provide you and answer any questions you may have. Brandy, I think you're muted. Um, sorry, I've got the one-arm problems and sometimes the shift does, doesn't work. Um, but I am Brandy Cochran and I am the director for the College and Career Advisors. We have a team of 36 advisors that are um, based regionally. And we basically meet with every student one-on-one -on -one, um, throughout the year to make sure that they have all of their state requirements through ICAP, which is the Individualized Ac Academic <clears throat> excuse me, the individualized career academic plan um, for them to be able to proceed in their high school years to make sure they're guided in the right direction to be able to be ready for that next step, whatever it may be, whether it's college, whether it's military, um, whether it may be a career, going straight into a career, and we're just here to help them go through that. Um, so you can find us on the face sheet under CCA for College and Career Advising, and um, we're we're here to help anybody. Any any advisor can help you, but you are assigned one throughout the year. So, I love that. Thank you, ladies, so much. Yeah. Can you guys talk about the mission of college and career readiness and tell us how you assist students? Yeah, I can start with that. Um, so, as I um, mentioned before, um, the mission um, of our department department is just to work with students in 8th through 12th grade um, to help them learn about themselves. Um, like I said, who they perceive themselves to be. Um, that changes a lot from 8th grade until high school. I know at the beginning of the webinar, we talked specifically about working with our high school students. Um, this year, with the support of Brandy and her team, we actually were um, very thoughtful about the importance of us working with eighth graders as well, because we want to make sure that eighth graders have a plan moving into high school. We feel like if we are just connecting with students um, as freshmen and teaching them all of these concepts, college and career and military and terms they've never heard, like concurrent enrollment and, you know, um, I can and all these things that can be overwhelming. And so we thought, you know what, why don't we start educating students in eighth grade and just introducing them in a very thoughtful way to some of these concepts and ideas. So that way they can kind of absorb it and they don't feel quite so overwhelmed and they understand what's going to be available to them as they transition into high school. So that was something new that we did this year that was super exciting. Um, but yes, we want to provide education in our department around all things post-secondary, whether it be career, college, um, through that advising um, uh, program, um, and through our transition specialists working with seniors. Um, and we want to be able to advocate a along with them for what um, what they're finding out as they go through. And Brandy will talk more about ICAP and some of those activities and exercises they partner with students to do. But you know, envision being a young person and you do this thing called an interest inventory and you're taking a survey and you're thinking things maybe you've never thought before. Do I like to work with my hands? Do I like to talk to people? Am I more of an introvert? Do I like technology? Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get this little report that says, hey, Sarah, this is who you are. And you're like, oh, cool. I didn't know that. And then, you know, from there, here are some careers that might be best suited for what your interests are. Um, and that's where we come in as a department and we help students get connected with that. So based on what that exploratory process and what comes out of that, we will help guide you and say, okay, well, based on this career path that you might wanna pursue, here's the education that's gonna be needed. Does it require a college degree? Not everybody should go to college if that's not the right path for them. 
can you get a certificate at one of our career techs? Um, you know, what, what does that need to be? Are you, you're a senior and you're still undecided? Let's get you connected with Nicole Brown, our transition specialist that can really help you put those final touches on everything to get you um, into a, a great place upon graduation. So um, that's what we do. We wanna make sure students feel educated. We want them to feel equipped and we want them to feel empowered. Um, one of the things, Sarah, that we talk a lot about in our department is the difference between knowing and doing. Um, we don't want one student to graduate from EPIC and not know what opportunities are available to them. Um, education is so powerful. Um, gosh, you might just be like, well, I'm just going to have to go to college. There's nothing else. That I, you know, well, maybe you don't necessarily need to. Maybe there's a program at a career tech where you can go in and get certified in something. And that's the best path for you to get you where you need to go. Um, you know, maybe there's an internship that you really should pursue while you're in high school to really get that hands-on experience and those observation hours to decide, is this something that I really want to go into? I need to see what this is like. Um, so we really want to provide all those opportunities for students so they know what's available. And then after graduation, that's where the doing comes in. Then it's up to them to really take in all that information and say, I feel equipped and I feel empowered and I have the tools necessary to go and pursue whatever that post-secondary opportunity is going to be for them. Um, and we're here them for them along, along the continuum. Um, when you're 14, um, you don't have to have it all figured out. It can change a lot throughout the time that you're an eighth grader till you're a senior and even beyond. We even support students um, once they become alumni, young adults. We always want to um, stay connected with you um, and support you um, any way we can. That is amazing. Seriously, you all are amazing in everything that you do to help all of our students. Um, let's begin with some questions. Um, what about your role in helping students accomplish their state department requirements for graduation? And that's big on everybody's, you know, everybody's questions is how, how many credits do we have to have to graduate? Do you want me to go ahead and just talk, yeah. Jay? Yeah, with our department. So, um, on our, basically the state requirements for um, graduation and the state requirements for ICAP are all, they kind of come through our department. Um, as far as we do, we look at their course plan with them and we study their course plan with them. That's a third semester activity that that happens between, uh, you know, on, on freshman, sophomore, junior and senior year. New upcoming, we're adding it to eighth grade as part of a third quarter activity, but it's more of an overview, like watch this video with us and we do it together so they can see what it's going to look like and how they go from just moving from grade to grade to actually gathering credits once they get to um, their ninth grade year. And so we kind of start that process with them there. We have um, 36, like I mentioned before, broken down regionally. And then, so once that student is assigned to a college and career advisor, then we will start going through all the courses with them to help them understand where they are. And then we make that transition into ICAP as far as what does the state require you to bring into the table? What do they know? Summer is super, super important right now, looking forward for all students, um, because they maybe could find some internships or some volunteer hours or something like that, that they can put in place for their work-based learning. And then that can happen, you know, as early as we start up in September with classes. So um, this is a time now that as they're think being forward thinkers and looking into that, they can start um, kind of trying to look at their interests. They may do a shadowing, they may do, um, um, an observation. Uh, so all those things that are are things that they can put in play for their work-based learning for their ICAP once they start back. Um, another thing that's super important for them right now with summer is that um, going ahead and making some of the, some students right now, they may have come to Epic late or um, they may have not completed their ICAP program from the school they came from, whether it's brick and mortar or another virtual opportunity. Um, and so we're playing catch up right now on some of those students. We're, we're using this time to go through. So for those students that are enrolled for 24, 25, if they're coming in non-compliant on that ICAP, we're using some time to catch up with them. You know, we'll still be making uh, meetings this summer and if they may not have access, but we do. And so we'll be able to do those virtual meetings and go through stuff with them um, and try to get them where they start in August and September, not behind, where they're starting on pace so they don't feel like they're playing catch up all the time. So that's another big point where um, our team comes into play in the summer. If I could add to, to Brandy's comment there, um, 
she and her team do such a fabulous job. And I would be remiss if I didn't um, just um, point out our strong leadership and the investment that they've made in ensuring that our students are really equipped um, in college and career preparedness. Um, as Brandy said, um, we've got advisors that are all over the state regionally based so we can connect with students virtually in person, whatever their um, preferred uh, connection uh, modality is. Um, but in a lot of brick and mortars, um, this whole process that is a state department requirement, this individual current academic plan ICAP, it is put on a teacher or maybe one school counselor and the fact that our district sees the importance and made the investment to say we really want to have thoughtful, intentional conversations and connect with people. I think we're the only school that I know of that has these college and career advisors. We have dedicated people um, that work with students just in this area, as Brandy said, looking through, making sure, do we need to connect you with your GSS, making sure you have all your credits, do you have your academic plan? Okay, let's go through these series of tasks that the State Department has required you to do to make sure that you, you know, you um, can graduate. And so um, we're so thankful that we have that, that we've got Brandy and her team that connect with students. It's over, gosh, 15,000 students, so they have a big job to do. Um, mm. But not only that, um, the college and career advisor um, having those conversations, they then can can connect our students directly with that specialist in our department um, to get the just-in-time information, all the correct information to maximize scholarship. I think that that's on our list to talk about today. We uh, awarded over $2 million in scholarships for our students. We have this wonderful associate's degree program. Um, we've got fabulous career techs. What district are you in? Let's get you connected and apply for those programs. Um, do, do you need us to connect you with a potential employer for a job? So. Um, the College of Career Advisor is such a critical role in our department, not only working with students for that career, um, individual career and academic plan, but also to connect them with the specialists to make sure that our students can maximize opportunities available to them while they're a student at Epic. And we're just really thankful for that. Hey, Jay, I will also say, too, that our success stories coming in are fantastic. I mean, the things that the students are saying, we've got some CCAs that literally will meet with students monthly. Um, every two weeks, they want to call and meet with something else because they found something new. So I think that um, us being available for them, you know, sometimes just to talk through things has been so valuable um, that it's great. You know, when they hear they land their first job or that they, you know, enroll in their first college class or something like that, that in, in an area that they may not have formed, you know, previously known they were interested in. So um, thank you, Jay, for your kind words, but I think the success stories from the students that are coming in um, are really what drives the CCAs to even, even meet more and do more because um, seeing the students' light bulbs come on and seeing them get excited about something is just, it's worth it, so. Yeah, I, I love that they have that they started this department. I was a teacher before with Epic, so that was on our shoulders. Um, and I, I used to always get a lot of the same questions. Um, they were kind of scared to do those interest profilers and things like that because they were afraid they would mess up. And I know that's one thing that I really talked about with my students was making sure that they understood that this is not something set in stone. You know, you could change your mind and that's okay. Um, you can change your path. You can maybe say you don't want to go to college, but then you decide you want to, and it's okay. You can change your mind. So talking about those changes, um, Brandy, are there anything, is there anything that's new that's coming in this next year with this CCA program besides the, what you're going to do over this summer with reaching out to some of our students that maybe didn't get finished up? Sorry, my space bar is just not wanting to work today. Um, I, I would say that the biggest thing is that we've had students that have um, are coming in maybe behind and they're trying to catch up. So they're changing grades and matriculating um, and moving through. And, and the way the program, with this being our first year, um, we set up the program with what we know, right? Well, you know, this year we're making, we're, we're punting a lot. We're changing our strategies a lot along the way. And I think that after this first year, we've developed... Um, what's going to be great next year. Like we're working on the new new um, lineup and the new things for grade levels. And so 
um, instead of assigning them per grade level, we're assigning them as a state mandated task. And then here are the things that we add on for juniors, or here's the things that have to be added on for seniors. So that way we can really work on that and it won't be as much flux on, on moving back and forth. And then there's some things internally um, that we're doing that'll make it a lot easier on the CCAs and teachers and uh, principals along the way as well. Um, this from the student aspect of it, they won't see a huge change. They'll still, still see the friendly faces that they're used to meeting with. Um, but it will be stronger and better for them. And I think that oh, as they start traveling through the program over the course of the next three years, they'll see great improvements. Yeah, that's that's great news. Um, we, I do also maybe just want to mention that this, and, and also just get clarity on this, the students do participate in this every year. So even if they go through two, if they go through two school years and in, in one year, let's say they do their 11th and 12th grade in one year, they still do ICAP for 11th and 12th grade. Is that correct? So, so yes and no. They'll have to do one basic program. However, there may be one or two things we add on okay. that they miss in their 11th grade program. So that's why we're trying to work this summer to catch up some of the people who may not have completed their ICAP. Our percentage rate right now is um, in the high 97%. And our CCAs have about 450 students per CCA. So we are very excited to be where we are. But 98%, yeah. 97% is not 100%. So yeah, we phenomenal. still have some that we don't want to have to play catch up in, in August and September. So if they're available and they're enrolled in 24, 25, we're, he we're here to reach out over the summer so they can play that. But yes, they do all do a program. You only required one per year. However, with that being said, there are additional things like FAFSA or like, um, um, trying to think, um, the there's survey. a post-survey uh, post yeah. that they do for seniors. There's some things like that that we add on depending on what grade they're in. Yeah, I'm that is a great success rate. I'm glad to hear about that. That is wonderful. Yeah, we're yeah. we're really excited about it. And I think um we're gonna we're gonna re tweak our, our resume building a little bit next year. So it'll be more beneficial for the kids. And we're gonna try to do it where it's a building resume. So, you know, they don't just start at their junior year. They're gonna start look, watching videos and picking up pieces along the way. So that'll make it easier for them as they go. And they'll have a tool that they can use um, across the board. So those are some interesting things that you're gonna see next year. I can't tell you how many times I re I would recommend my students to go back because they would be applying for a job and they were like, well, I don't have a resume. I'm like, yes, you do. You did one during mm -hmm. your ICAP. So they can go back and use that. And so it's very good information for them to have moving forward. I mean, their whole high school years, it's, it's great information and, and uh, great, great things that we supply to them. So, yeah. Absolutely. Y'all are wonderful. Seriously. Um, can you tell us, Shannon, a little bit about TEL and Epic Collegiate Academy? Yes, I would love to share a little bit about that. So for students that are choosing college for their next step, um, we have some amazing opportunities that are aligned with their interests, as well as help to facilitate them being future ready and in demand, right? One of those programs is our ECA program. Now, our Epic Collegiate Academy, which we refer to ECA, is facilitated through a platform called TEL, TEL. TEL is not a college, it's just a platform facilitator. And I'll speak into that a little bit more when we talk about concurrent options. But ECA um, is a program that allows our students to follow a course sequencing that will allow them to graduate with an associate's degree upon graduating high school. Uh, we are so excited. We have 265 students that are currently on the track uh, and participating in this program. That, that number will go up as applications have recently closed and we're still in the processing of all of those. So we are looking at upwards of 300 students here at Epic that are on track and pursuing after this associate's degree. Um, those credits are accredited through Oklahoma Christian. So that is where that transfer uh, credit is going to come from. Um, I will tell you also, so exciting. Um, we were volunteering at the graduation. It is so rewarding to see our ECA students walk across that stage. We had 49 students graduate this year with their associate's degree. This is the second graduating cohort. We've had right about 65-ish um, graduate already uh, since the origination of this in the spring of 21. 
Um, again, this is kind of a preset core sequencing and Angie Lee facilitates support for this program. She would love to connect, give you all the details regarding this. Um, she's a great support for our students. We'll tell you one of the beautiful things about this associate's degree program is not only are they graduating with an associate's degree from Oklahoma Christian, which is approximately to date a $60,000 degree at no out-of-pocket expense to the family. They're gonna leverage their learning fund in this and Angie can kind of lay that out for any families that are interested. Um, but along with that, these courses through this TEL platform are facilitated with an exorbitant amount of support. So these students that are using this concurrent enrollment platform, it is a very rigorous sequencing. As you can imagine, they're graduating with 60 plus concurrent hours, college credit. Um, Angie has daily office hours. She is there to support these ECA students in any way. So we are super excited about this program. Um, we've had such great success with our students that have gone through these, uh, se these sequencing. And ECA also has an option through a plus one program that is one year of college credit. And it's facilitated in very much the same partnership as the Epic Collegiate Academy. And again, Angie Lee would love to discuss uh, details around those programs if anyone has any additional questions. What great success stories. I mean, that's that's amazing. Kind of gives you goosebumps a little bit when oh. you watch kids graduate and and uh, know that they're set, they're really set up for success. That just totally sets them up. So with that in mind, um, can you kind of ex explain, you mentioned Angie, but can mm -hmm. you kind of explain maybe if you're a parent sitting here going, okay, how do I get my student enrolled in this? Where, where do we start with this program? Yeah. So the semester, they, we submit applications. We open applications for these. Uh, each semester. The application for the fall 24-25 school year has closed. Now, there will be another opportunity at the end of the fall semester for anybody that would like to join and start this sequencing. So we are super excited to tell you that ninth graders can enter this sequencing. We love seeing that because when you think about a ninth grader entering the sequencing, even in the spring semester, we're talking a really robust option to spread that sequencing out so the college rigor is not as heavy, right? Because we have more uh, semesters to do that. We really uh, are, um, the admission is for ninth fall and spring and 10th grade fall. Outside of that, we really caution students um, regarding that sequencing. It's just a lot of rigor when you're trying to do that over that short amount of time upon graduation. Any questions though about that regarding students that may be bringing a lot of concurrent enrollment credit into the program as a 10th grader? There are some variabilities there and Angie would be glad to lean in and look at that. Um, but again, we you want to make sure you're watching the orbit um, those kinds of things. You're going to see when that application opens up, it's going to be announced there. Uh, it will be towards the end of the fall semester for spring. That's awesome. Um, so it sounds like they need to maybe con get in contact with Angie. We can probably put her information in the chat towards the end. Okay. What about scholarships? Is that something that that you can kind of touch on as well. Sure, sure. Um, we are super excited as uh, Dr. Strickland denoted a little bit, we have had almost two and a half million dollar scholarships awarded and we know there's even more out there, right? There's a lot of scholarships. Um, Brianna Strickler is a phenomenal resource for our families. She has a robust scholarship base. She's there to help them in all aspects of the college application and scholarship um, process. I will tell you, speaking of resumes, this is really important. So we are so excited to have Brandy's team to really lead and guide and build that out because it comes in really handy when they're looking and having those planning meetings with Brianna. I do want you to know that if you are listening and you are an eighth grader, now's the time. 
because when you start looking at scholarships, there's going to be some internal scholarships that are going to be a, surrounded by leadership and, and service. And the more they are seeing the longevity of your leadership and your service, the more likely you are to be able to fall into a competitive field for that particular scholarship. Colleges are pretty wise when they see a junior with a robust uh, service scholarship that is only for their senior year. They pretty much know what's going on. So the earlier these kids can uh, volunteer with Habitat Humanity, volunteer at their local Y, those kinds of things and any capacity within those uh, in a leadership role, the more robust that uh, resume will be for them to be competitive in that scholarship realm. You are seeing very variable, lots of variabilities out there on what is now considered the real look. Um, they are still looking at ACT, not quite as hard as they used to. They're looking for a whole person. So have you maintained an incredible GPA? Do you have a good ACT? But have you balanced that with service, with leadership? They're looking for that real whole person. And the sooner our kids can uh, start leaning into that, the more competitive they are going to find that they are in this scholarship realm. Okay. All right. So we've been talking about the ECA, the Epic Collegiate Academy. So what about the concurrent enrollment and how is that different? Some people don't know what that is. So could you maybe just tell us what concurrent enrollment is and then maybe how that can help them achieve their goals with Epic? I would love to. <laughs> so uh, as you can imagine, I'm really passionate about this for students that know that college is their next step. So concurrent enrollment or dual enrollment is the ability to take college courses while in high school. These classes, once completed and passed, provide a student to earn college credit while in high school, but also they are checking off that high school grad check. So what that means is if let's say I take uh, a comp concurrent class as a junior, as a concurrent class, that is going to fulfill my junior English A and B requirement for high school graduation. So those comp classes here at Epic, give, we give a big bang. We give a full year for one semester concurrent enrollment. So as a senior, they could take comp two, fulfill their senior English A and B, go off to college and not have to take freshman comp, right? It's a wonderful opportunity. Our students here have the ability, which is very rare and unique, to take concurrent enrollment with any of our 44 partners in the state of Oklahoma and leverage their learning fund. Now, there's a lot of variabilities with that learning fund. One, we've got to make sure that we have funds available to cover the cost. If there are not, the, that bill will turn to an out-of-pocket expense but they, they can use that. There's steps around that. So feel free to reach out. I have a really easy resource for that. Um, but they have such unique opportunities starting in the ninth grade. So our EPIC students have an ability to take concurrent enrollment at ORU or using the TEL platform for online classes only. So they, they can start these uh, earning these concurrent credits as early as ninth grade. So eighth graders out there, now's the time. Reach out to me. Let's talk. Um, tenth graders as well, they have an opportunity through TEL and ORU. Juniors and seniors, the world opens up, right? Because the State Department of Education does not allow any students before junior year currently to start taking concurrent enrollment. They can start taking concurrent enrollment at public college and universities the summer before their junior year. There are some incredible programs out there for seniors. There's state tuition waivers that only cover the tuition. So there's lots of information I would love to share. So uh, email me and um, I will provide you those resources and we can chat and answer any questions you have. Yeah, that's fabulous. Um, I just, 
I just think there's so many opportunities out there and there is a lot of information and students and families can get lost with that. So I'm really glad that they're able to reach out and ask those questions whenever they, they do think of them or when they need help with those certain things, because it is, it's a lot um, for, for families to be taking on, but what an incredible way to graduate high school, knowing that you took you know, a concurrent class and you were, you were sufficing both things at the same time for college and high school, you're knocking it out of the park. So, I mean, that's, that's great. I love that. And I love that we have so many people that are readily available to help our families maneuver and guide them through the process because it is a process. It is. And I will tell you, we have a special that's dedicated just to tell. So Elizabeth Walsh, if, uh, if they have any questions, they can reach out to her she monitors and facilitates support daily office hours to students that aren't in the ECA program, but are using the TEL platform to facilitate their concurrent enrollment. That is an incredible opportunity to have someone to come along and walk you in. It's not a leap. It's a step into that college rigor. We love that partnership because it does facilitate the ability for the teacher to log in and see how their students are doing. That is unique to TEL and OC, that partnership, we do not have that with area colleges. They deem these students as college students. Um, there are some colleges that um, we have some ability and they, they share grade checks, but those are few and far in between. TEL is very unique in that support for our families. Um, I will tell you in light of looking at earning college credit, I just want to put in perspective what the Epic Collegiate Academy really can do for a student. They are entering with two years of college done. So in essence, they could earn a master's degree in the same time that they could earn an undergraduate. It's incredible. Same thing even with one-off concurrent classes, right? We knock out a year, a year and a half. That cuts down if we want to further our education in the college realm on the time. Um, so, so there are so many amazing opportunities if college is your next step. And man, I would love to share more and resources with anybody who has any questions. I love your passion. Seriously, I do. Um, we have some exciting news to share about the college and career program this past year as it relates to college planning. So would you mind sharing some of those great experiences that happened for our Epic families during the 23-24 school year? Oh, absolutely. Um, let's kind of start with just ECA. Um, the amount of students that are first gen, meaning they don't have anybody in their family who has ever been able to have the opportunity for whatever reasons, varying reasons, right? to pursue a college education. Um, this is a real incredible opportunity to be able to provide two years of college for these families where resources may be a challenge, right? We are coming off of COVID. There's a lot of variabilities there. We have some students that may be on support of their own. Um, the stories that we have had that we have set across on a Zoom with parents, just tears um, of being able to provide this opportunity when, when the desire was there, but how to facilitate that was just so unknown um, are countless. They, they seriously are, they're just countless. Um, I would tell you, Brianna has experienced that as well, facilitating and supporting our families on unique ways to create um, resources and scholarships around things that they just didn't see, maybe that there was validity toward to pursue in a scholarship realm. Some people really do not understand their hearts to serve as service because they are just so driven in that capacity. So to be able to help them curate that in a written form, whether that's an essay for a scholarship or just giving validity in the different areas of scholarship and provide that for our families has just been um, so rewarding for all of us to be able to see here. Um, we see this across the board, whether it's through our transition specialist as well, 
um, students that are just not sure how to get plugged in, uh, Nicole Brown being able to facilitate kind of digging that in with our students um, has been quite rewarding. And on our side, we have students that come and they were like, I want to take concurrent enrollment, but or I want to go to college, but I don't know what I want to do. So how can I take college courses? And being able to share with them, listen, all degree plans, no matter what you do, are going to have freshman core classes. Let's knock those out concurrently. And then realizing, I didn't even know that was an option. So being able to get connected, and our CCAs have been so instrumental in that connection, to provide that clarity for families has just been amazing. You know, we, we have students and families share with us, well, I just am going to take over the family farm. I am so grateful for that, uh, but let's talk about the fact that that soil may not be the same kind of soil that your family farmed. So do you know that you could take one concurrent credit about soil conservation at OSU, never go to college and use your learning fund to pay that just to gain that knowledge? Do you know we could enter you in, uh, look at career programs centered around agricultural and all the aspects of that, and you have a certification? Um, so there's so many variabilities that these connections and these conversations have proven to be life changing for some of our families. Yeah, I think that's a really good point to, you know, we're, we're talking about those really goal driven students who want to go out and get a, a full degree before they finish high school. But you don't have to. You can mm -hmm. take one course, one course, and it puts you ahead after you graduate from high school. So I think that that is also a great thing to mention. It, it doesn't matter where you are on your path. If you wanna take one class, you wanna take three classes or you are just very driven to get finished really early. So I think it's good for us to, uh, to mention that. And then just because it's so fabulous, we need to mention it again. I think Jay said it a while ago. Um, I think you said we had given $2.4 million in scholarships that were awarded to students who applied, which is- Yes, and I'll, I'll tell you that that number is way low. And the reason okay. I say that is because that is what's being reported. So students have received external scholarships. Some may not, may not have declared it or, or reported it. So we are just so excited about, again, the CCAs connecting uh, our students, our families, to the support specialist, Brianna, that can facilitate and help them along the way. Um, it has been a game changer for our families. And um, we are here, as Dr. Strickland has uh, spoken to, that's why we're here. We're here for our families. We're here to help us support our teachers, make that connection, to create uh, meetings centered around alignment. So our students are indeed future ready and in demand, that they are harnessing those. Um, you know, I know we're gonna start kind of talking about career tech, uh, but I would be, be remiss if I didn't mention, this goes the same for career tech. We, we've met with families and students that say, well, I'm taking over my uh, family's um, electrical business. That is amazing. Do you know that you could enter an electrical program create a certification for yourself post high school and set yourself apart from other electrical companies because you have a certification and, and leverage the learning fund. So there's things like that, that we are so excited about these opportunities. We want to meet with you. We want to, you know, answer these questions and we want to be able to meet with like, I don't even know what to ask. Like, let's talk, let's talk. All right. I think we're getting a little, I want to make sure we get everything in. So maybe we should start talking about career tech. What do you think, Sarah? Oh, absolutely. Career tech okay. is important. And I know all of our, our families want to hear about this because some students are not college type kiddos. Mama three, three in college this fall. Um, but it, it isn't a path for everybody. And I had one that had no idea what she wanted to do until her junior year of college. And that is totally okay for our families to understand that it's okay that you don't know what you want to do with the rest of your life. So don't, you know, don't fret, don't fear. If your student says, I have zero idea, you guys are there to catch them. 
Well, as I said earlier, um, selfishly, we wish we could come to every single Ask the Authentic because we can talk all day long about all these different topics. But Sarah, you're exactly right. Um, Hadley Walters is our statewide career tech specialist. She does such a fabulous job um, educating our students and families families, um, not only about what career tech can provide through dozens and dozens and dozens of programs, but what career tech you could apply to based on your location across the state. We have dozens and dozens and dozens of career techs across the state. So she would love to connect with you, talk to you about that. Um, gosh, I remember when I was in high school, I really didn't know a lot about it. I think back then we called it Bowtech. Um, it's career tech now and it has evolved and it has changed. And I mean, my goodness, from, you know, health care service programs to, you know, Shannon mentioned electrical automotive, education industry, um, oh, cosmetology. I mean, there's just aeronautics. I mean, all kinds of things. And, and you're exactly right. What we want to do is make sure that students understand that um, you don't have to go to college because you just feel like that's the next step and you're supposed to do that. And then you end up maybe spending money and you get a degree that maybe you don't really feel excited and purposed in. And we have a problem, not only in Oklahoma, um, but really nationwide, it's called underemployment. And what that means is we have students that have a lot of degrees and they're getting jobs that they didn't need a degree for. And they're like thinking, why did I do this? I didn't need that. So if we can connect students with a career-based program where they can go in, they can get hands-on experience, they can even get a job while they're in high school in that field, and then get something that will position them, as Shannon said, to be set apart and go right into that field, what a fabulous opportunity for our students. Um, you can always go back to college. Um, you can take college classes while you're um, in a career tech. It's not one or the other in this department. Did you know also you can take career tech classes that will convert to college credit? I mean, there's so many different things that you can do. Um, and so that's really what we want to do in our department. And it really goes back to what we talked about at the beginning with ICAP. We say ICAP is the first step to the next step. Who are you? What are you interested in? Let us educate you. Then from that vision, what are all the different experiences? Let's create a robust educational experience. Maybe it's one college class and a career tech. Maybe it's only a career tech class. Maybe it's an internship coupled with the career tech. I mean, there's all these different facets. Um, and it's really just starts with that ICAP, meeting with that college and career advisor, having those intentional conversations, Boy, I'm so glad we took this off of teachers' plates at Epic. They used to have to do everything. And now we can really focus in this area and provide that intentional support um, and, and help students get connected. But, but absolutely, I will tell you this, career tech is growing in the state of Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, we're kind of flip-flopped on supply and demand. We have more more students that want to get seats in career tech programs than we have seats available. So what we're hoping is career techs are gonna start becoming wise and say, we need to open up more programs. We need to invest. We need state funding to, to build robust career tech departments because the state is seeing that shift. We want our underemployment rate, our unemployability numbers to drop in the state of Oklahoma. And we have areas and fields in construction and automotive where we don't have enough people to work. So let's get students connected so they can get jobs making $40,000 as a 19 year old student. Wouldn't that have been great? I didn't make that my first year teaching out of college. So um, we we have all that research. Um, you know, we've talked often about um, future ready and in demand. That in demand piece is so important. The future ready is the education. In demand, our department makes sure that our students know what career fields are in demand. They're looking for working students right, right now, and we want to help you get into those positions. So can't say enough about career tech. I love that. Seriously, career tech is, I feel like, underrated and has been for a number of years. So I love that we are promoting that within Epic and allowing these students to realize that this is a great, great path for your life. Um, so real quick, because we have had so much to talk about, we probably could talk for another hour, career planning. Um, yeah. What guidance do you offer students if they, they're unsure? And we have a lot that I'm sure they have no idea what they want to do. 
Like you're going to turn 18, you're going to graduate. Where do I go? What do I do? So what are some of the ways that you can assist those families and those students with their career planning? Absolutely. So again, going back to the college and career department, working through that ICAP, being intentional about it, connecting with our specialists across our department while you're in high school. But you're right, Sarah, we have students that they get to their senior year. Maybe they've been with Epic all along. They've done the ICAP. They've had some exposure to some different things and they're coming up to the finish line and they're like, I don't have a plan. I don't have a next step. Um, I know, but I, I don't know what the do is yet. So we um, created a brand new position in our department this year. It's called the transition specialist. So just think about that, the transition from high school to the real world. And her name, my name is Nicole Brown, and she is so wonderful and so passionate about working with these seniors. Um, and we can connect you with them uh, or with her. Students can connect directly with her. Students can tell their roster teachers, connect me with her. There's lots of different ways. Um, but what Nicole really does is she works with seniors to really you know, dot that I and cross that T and say, okay, let's look at who you are as a student, all these experiences that you've had, and let's get you to that very next step. If you think you want to, you know, go into a field, maybe you don't have that career tech experience, let's get you connected with an employer or with Anita, um, and maybe an internship right away. Um, okay, you've thought, you've talked about college, you've been back and forth, you're not sure you're ready, you know what? Let's let's take that step. Let's apply. I can get you with Bree. We can make sure and get you with Shannon. Is it, you know, at a, at a local college? Is there any money available? She just puts those last little places um, in, in, into action for you. So you have that next step because it, sometimes you just need that nudge. You just need that encouragement. And she wants to listen and help help you kind of figure that out. Sometimes you just need that professional where you're thinking a lot of thoughts and you need that listening ear. Okay, I've heard you say this based on everything that you've said and what's evidence through your ICAP, maybe this is the right path. We also haven't talked about military. It is a great option for many, many of our students. Um, there are careers that you can, wonderful careers and benefits through the military. We can get you connected with um, our military representatives if that's something that you might be interested in. So we are so thankful that we have Nicole Brown. Um, we mentioned this earlier. Every senior at Epic is part of their ICAP. They complete what's called a post high school plan survey. So it's, you know, what are what are you planning to do? And we ask a very specific question. Do you, know, do you have a plan? And if students say, I'm just still undecided, Nicole Brown reaches out to every one of those students and asks to schedule a meeting. Um, we keep a lot of data. Um, we collect a lot of data with that survey, but we will reach out to every student and try to connect with them and just talk them through so they do have that, that next step. So um, we're thrilled to have that position. Um, we really feel like we try to cover every single possible area in our department. Um, again, I don't think a lot of high schools invest in a transition specialist. Um, so we're so grateful that we have just a dedicated team member who works on both sides, the career pathway side and the college pathway um, side to get students connected with the appropriate person. So once they graduate from high school, they have a plan. The other thing that Nicole does is she connects with our alumni. Just because you graduate from Epic doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you again. We would love to, to stay connected. Where are you working? How are things worked out for you? Do you want to come back and do some mentorship with us? How can you come and speak to young people about what your experience was upon graduation? So she also connects with our alumni through a Facebook group, um, lots of different ways. So um, Nicole stays busy um, and, and is so pleased that she gets to serve in the way that she does. So um, thank you for giving us an opportunity to talk about what she does as well. Yeah, I think um, we have learned a lot. There's probably a lot more that we could learn. But I think one big nugget that I have taken away today is really wherever you are on your path, your first line of defense really that you should be running to is your ICAP advisor. They can direct you. It, all these names that we've thrown out today, if you don't remember them, don't understand what to do, when you meet next year with your ICAP advisor, you ask those questions. You ask those questions about things and they can get you to one of you guys that have those answers um, to all of these people that we've talked about today. So I think that that is our first line of defense really that I've taken away today is really, you just need to talk. You know, you need to speak up. You need to talk to them whenever you're doing your ICAP and they can help you. 
um, to get you to wherever those places are that you need to be and get those answers. So I think that's great. I, I think we've learned a lot of information. I'm sure we'll have a lot more to share next year as well. Um, so, uh, is there anything else that we missed out that you would like to share before we wrap up? Cause we try and keep it under uh, a certain amount of time. So people don't get, uh, you know, too distracted in the amount of time that we have here. So just making sure that there's not anything that we missed out on that you would like to, to cover real quick. I, I think we've covered everything we have on the agenda, um, but we hope you guys invite us back again in the fall. Uh, Shannon mentioned the Orbit. Um, that is kind of our new collapsed all things in one newsletter. So we've got a lot of information shared, a lot of date shared um, in the Orbit. So check us out there. All of our information, um, the folks that we mentioned, um, the team members are all, their emails are there. They're, you know, what they do, how they serve, it's all on the website. But I think you're exactly right. It can be overwhelming. Get with your college and career advisor. And I do want to mention this. Some people might go, well, why don't we just, can't we just have the advisor do everything? Well, gosh, then we're back to that problem of only knowing a little bit about a lot because you can't know everything. It's that first point to go, I hear you. Let me connect you with this. And then they can give you all the information. Our team loves to meet with families and caregivers and students via Zoom. We'll hop on a call. We do a lot of evening sessions. Um, we love grace and we give grace. So if you just show up, I mean, we have evening sessions and we'll have a student come in and go, I, I don't even know why I'm here. I just think I'm, and we're like, that's awesome. You know, we're just glad that you came. So um, there is never a silly question. We know it's overwhelming. Um, we hear you. Um, you. If you call us and or try to schedule a meeting and say, I'm lost, great. That's what we're here to do is to help you find your way. So um, we just thank um, you all again for, for giving us this platform. And um, we're growing every year. We want to be responsive to the trends and the career and college field. Bless you, Brandy. Um, I saw you sneeze. Um, and so we're, we're constantly evolving. Um, you know, every year we want to provide more resources and more advocacy and education to our students. And so please do have us back because we'll probably have more going on next year, but um, we just can't um, thank um, you all enough. And, and we're just excited for 2024, 2025. Um, it's already almost here and we've got lots of fun, exciting things planned for the summer to get ready to serve well next year too. Yeah, we appreciate you all being here. We really do. You, you are very valuable to Epic and we know that you work very, very hard in making sure that our students are um, really ready for the future. So we really commend you on that. If you, anyone out there still has questions about today, um, please just reach out to our department. We can get you to the right people that you need to go to. If you um, need to talk to us, I put it in the chat earlier. You can reach out to us by phone. You can reach out to us by email and then we can get you to where you need to be. We're always happy to answer any questions that you have. And um, we will have you all back again at some point, but I think we're going to end it for today. And I'm so glad you guys have, have joined us today and we'll see you guys next time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.